violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's get into the video. These photos are from parents concerned about their child sleeping in dorms at the University of Georgia. Some parents say those rooms are not clean, and they say some of them even have mold. In just the last three months, parents have filed nearly 250 complaints about that. Uh-oh. <laughs> so UGA dorms, um, and if you guys don't know, I attend the University of Georgia, and I stayed in the dorms um, my freshman year. I stayed in Creswell. Um, <clears throat> we had Russell Hall, Brumby. Um, you know, those are some of the most historic ones. And it was right by Bolton. Now they built a new Bolton. And it looks like they're about to build some more dorms right behind Bolton. So, you know, I loved it. It was definitely not the cleanest not the most sanitary, but it was the experience that mattered for me. <laughs> but the parents are complaining. Students are complaining, sending pictures back to their parents. They're finna get this done quick. They're finna to, they're, they're about to correct all of the issues that they got with the mold and the ventilators and all that kind of stuff. Unlike a certain HBCU in DC, Howard University. But I just want you guys to watch the difference between the swiftness and the action that they're going to take. I guarantee people are not gonna be protesting outside the dorms for weeks to come. That's not gonna happen. In some of them, they, they say their students are getting sick. Channel 2's Elizabeth Rollins is live in Athens for us and Elizabeth, the school is responding and says they've now looked into every complaint. They looked into every complaint. Howard didn't even want to make a statement. Remember we did that story? Howard didn't even want to make a statement. Absolutely. We spoke to UGA students who are so concerned they're considering using COVID best practices like wearing a mask inside or social distancing themselves from their dorm. <laughs> It's pretty typical for college students to be sick of school at the end of the semester, but not the other way around. Some UGA students believe school may be actually making them sick. Yeah, you know, it does kind of suck when your throat hurts every night. According to UGA officials. And that's that, that's the basic, every that's the basic, that's the basic white chick um, sneaker, just to let you know. <laughs> the basic white chick runners. It does kind of suck when your throat hurts every night. According to UGA officials, nearly 250 complaints have been filed since August regarding mold and health concerns inside several dorms. But officials say they've addressed and taken care of any issues related to mold. A lot of people file work requests to like change the air filter and I think they try but there, you know, there's a lot of dorms and I don't know if they've like changed. A lot of people say that they have to wait a couple weeks for it to get changed. So that's hopeful that they're doing something. I don't know if they're doing enough. Rebecca Etheridge tells Channel 2 her daughter's dorm still appears dirty and unmaintained. She snapped these pictures a few weeks ago when she was visiting. Mm, yeah, they, uh, and I remember one time, like, I, I had put my sneakers in a, in a, it was like a closet near the ceiling. I don't know what happened, but I didn't wear the sneakers for a couple months, and then, like, the whole sneaker was just molded. I was like, bro, what the... So this type of stuff has been happening. I guess I didn't really notice. I didn't really care. I just was happy to get out of my parents' house, to be honest. She's had some sinus issues um, really the entire time. There have been only a very small window of a week or so that she felt better, but she had also been home. Both students and parents say more needs to be done. I've just heard about people saying they're dirty. Like people don't like to spend a lot of time there. I'd like the air quality to get a little bit better. I'm sure a lot of people think that. Yeah. And we're back out here live where UGA officials sent us a very detailed response and statement regarding all the steps and actions they have taken in response to these complaints. We have that on our website, WSBTV.com. We're live in Athens tonight, Elizabeth Rollins, Channel 2 Action News. And hopefully the students start feeling better. They have to get ready for finals very soon, Elizabeth. 
More breaking news now at noon. Police have identified the Philadelphia teenager shot and killed while waiting for his school bus. Police say 14-year-old Samir Jefferson is the victim. Wow. Kid waiting for a school bus. We've done stories like that um, in Gwinnett County. We've done stories like that pretty much everywhere, but these kids can't even wait on their school bus. 14-year-old kid shot 20 times, they say. Police say they have two persons of interest in custody. The shooting happened around 3.30 yesterday afternoon at the busy intersection of Rising Sun and Wyoming Avenues in Feltonville. Jefferson was shot... Rising Sun. I mean, the... the these sun, these sun brothers out here is, is wiling. <laughs> look at all these, look at all these bullet markers, man. Jeez. 18 times and investigators do believe he was targeted. A woman who heard the gunfire spoke with Eyewitness News last night. Like a lot of boom, boom, boom. Luckily me and my, my son was in the house, so I'm just thankful for that. Now, police say surveillance video and an eyewitness helped them track down the persons of interest. There is no word yet on a motive. Yeah, I spoke to his family members this morning, and they are devastated at Samir Jefferson's death. They say he is going to be missed. He brought a lot of joy and was a huge part of their lives. But they're also very angry, deeply angry, not just at the people who murdered their brother and loved ones, but also at the people who stood by while it was happening. They're hoping... I mean, what are you supposed to do when these dudes are willing to fire off 20 shots on a 14-year-old? I, I mean, you can't really do much unless you, you, you grip it and you buzz back. That police can find the people responsible and bring them to justice. It's really sad because my mom lost her, her youngest son, and it's really heartbreaking to all of us because, like, it's really not going to be the same without my little brother because he really brought joy to our family. This is a picture family members shared up. With hey, I got that hoodie. I know y'all seen me make videos with the Biggie Smalls hoodie. Man, I mean, what a way to go. You know, and we don't know what he was involved in. We don't know if he was involved. It could be mistaken identity or, you know, it could be him being involved in something who knows with us of the teen police say yesterday around 3 30 p.m jefferson was waiting for a bus at the corner of rising sun in wyoming avenues in feltonville that's when the gunman got out of a car and chased 14 year old jefferson in broad daylight while shooting at him he was hit and killed by more than a dozen bullets the gunman got away in a car but police stopped it near fifth street in somerville avenue uh-oh the police were able to stop a car in philadelphia even with the proposal that the um, city council put forth to make it harder for police to stop vehicles. I mean, thank God they were able to do their job. Hopefully it's not going to get thrown out or be inadmissible because of the way that they pulled them over. Oh, you're not supposed to pull somebody over with their tail light out. Just, you know, you're supposed to give them a pass. <laughs> I mean, this is what's going on in philadelphia and they're it's almost like they're trying to loosen up the rules to enable more of this violence i mean you gotta lock these dudes up and you gotta be you it's gotta be more proactive policing trained so that they're not making mistakes but proactive investigators took two people into custody the family they are now demanding justice what did you gain except becoming a murderer except for taking somebody else's child now, police commissioner outlaw, she gave a statement. See, what she pretty much doesn't get is that a lot of these dudes take pride in being a murderer. A lot of these guys take pride in having bodies and all the, uh, like, you have to understand this is a thing. This is the culture. What did you gain except <laughs> becoming a murderer? Except for taking somebody else's child. Now, police commissioner outlaw, she gave a statement yesterday and said that her heart is grieving for the families and the victims of this gun violence. There's been several teens and young people that have been shot and killed in the last few days. I hate when they just hit it over with the gun violence. 
days, and she says that while they can't bring those loved ones back, what they can do is have a full investigation, hopefully bringing closure and justice to these families. I'll send it back to you. I'm Miguel Martinez Valle, NBC 10 News. This is the search for suspects after a 14 year old boy was gunned down while waiting for a bus after school. Authorities have identified the victim as Samir Jefferson, a ninth grader at Thomas Edison High School. He is now the 198th shooting victim under the age of 18 in the city. The 198th shooting victim under the age of 18 in the whole city. And there's over 500 murders in Philadelphia now. So that's that's pretty much 20% 20% of the murder or of the shooters of the of the victims rather it's safe to say 20% of them were under the age of 18. I mean that's insane. That's insane. Actually more than that like 40%. I'm sure because it's only 500 it's 500 murders. I'm thinking 1000 murders. That's wild, bro. It's unacceptable. Sheesh, man. So far in 2021, at least 33 of them have died, already surpassing last year's total. The shooting happened around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Police say at least 35 shots were fired at Samir Jefferson, who they believe was in fact the intended target. Action News reporter Corey Davis has more on what we're learning about a possible motive in this shooting. We've counted at least 12 bullet holes just like these in the side wall of this Rite Aid here at West Wyoming and Rising Sun Avenues. This is where police say two men fired at least 35 shots at a 14 year old boy, killing him out here in broad daylight. Wow, 35 shots. A kid, like what did a 14 year old kid do to get hit 18 times? Sources tell Action News that 14 year old Samir Jefferson may have been shot to death because of taunts on social media. Well, yeah, I mean, it's social media beef. It so he was he was gang gang probably or, or trying to play with it, whatever. Um, you could tell Shorty right here is woke. So uh, she pretty much voted for this. You can you can pretty much assume that she pretty much voted for this. And the problem is that we don't really understand that a lot of the people that we're voting for don't have our interests our best interests at heart they don't know how to solve these problems um and the reason why i said she's woke is because the piercing and you know all that kind of stuff it's it's a it's a peer indicator Your old kid do to get hit 18 times sources tell action news that 14 year old samir jefferson may have been shot to death because of taunts on social media Bernice Whedon tells us she manages the Rite Aid on West Wyoming and Rising Sun Avenues that got hit multiple times yesterday afternoon around 3.30. I feel so sorry for the family. Police say Samir was waiting for a SEPTA bus when at least two people jumped out of a car and started firing. They chased him across the street and shot him to death. The fact that, you know, somebody can really sit here and kill a child like that, stand over his... And it was probably another child, honestly. It's probably another child. They said they got the suspects in custody, so I mean, like I said, I'll stay on it, but it was most likely some other kids. His body and just shoot him up like that is very, very sad. Wheaton says the store was struck as Samir tried to run inside for safety. One of the bullets went through a metal gate covering a window. That's where my cashiers stand at. Um, and then I got the call when I got the call, my security was standing at the front door, which you can see the three bullet holes. Investigators say they took two people in for questioning, but no one has been charged. You always got to keep your guard up in this area, and it's sad because if it's not a store getting robbed, it's somebody getting shot. Wow. <laughs> I, w I mean, at least she told the truth, but I wonder why that is. <clears throat> she said, if not a store is getting robbed, it's somebody getting shot took two people in for questioning, but no one has been charged. You always got to keep your guard up in this area, and it's sad because if it's not a store getting robbed, it's somebody getting shot. Reporting in Fountainville, Corey Davis, Channel 6 Action News.
what it is.